Welcome. I'm Cheryl Mitchell, the president of Tree Leaven, and have been doing a series called Grounded Leadership, where we explore the people in our communities who have made a huge, huge difference for all of us. Today we'll be talking about the Con Hogan Awards, and I am thrilled to have as my guest Mary Powell, who is the CEO of the Green Mountain Power Corporation. Mary, welcome. Thank you, it's wonderful to be here with you, Cheryl. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to mm -hmm. talk about the Hogan Awards, and especially to talk about why you chose to make a nomination of the winning awardee last year, uh, Colonel James Baker. But first, I just want to let our audience know that um, Mary exemplifies all of the things that we're looking for in the Hogan Awards, somebody who is innovative, caring, compassionate, works with the team. These could as easily be the Mary Powell Awards. I see you as one of the giants in really changing Vermont for the good um, in so much of the work that you've done. Um, and I'm wondering, Thank could you. you just take a minute to talk about, you've become certified, you've been a leader in becoming a, a B Corp, Benefit Corporation, and what that's meant to Green Mountain Power and to the state. Well, first of all, it's wonderful to be with you and to talk about the Con Hogan Award and to talk about the amazing uh, Jim Baker and, and why I nominated him last year. Um, and to talk about being a benefit corporation because I actually feel like it ties in perfectly with the conversation and the Con Hogan Award. Because really at the end of the day, becoming a benefit corporation, first it's not easy and second it's a serious commitment because you, you literally have to change your corporate bylaws to say that you exist for the benefit of the customers and communities you serve. And, and we also say the planet. You know, so it's really customers, communities, and the planet, um, and so it, it it really means a lot to all of us. Um, and you know, we were we became certified a number of years ago, but as I like to say, it it kind of naturally came out of acting like one anyway. And that's you know, I think the exciting part about the work we right. do is. We are customer obsessed, we are obsessed with Vermont, we love Vermont, we want to make a difference. And so that ethos in Green Mountain Power is what got us to the point where we you know, went through the process to be certified. And actually when we were certified, we got an incredibly high score because I think we were already, you were already, doing we were already behaving in that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and you're serving now 78% of the population yeah. of Vermont? Yeah, we serve, yeah, we serve the vast majority of Vermont, anywhere from, you know, uh, Bennington and Sunderland to Brattleboro and Wilmington, all the way up to St. Johnsbury and St. Albans. So um, we have, a, you know, I think 11,000 miles of line. <laughs> that's, that's another way to think about it. And, right. and certainly, you know, 40 some odd hydro stations that we take care of and a couple wind farms. And, you know, and then it's really about, you know, providing incredible low carbon, you know, low cost, reliable right. service to Vermonters while we innovate. So a huge re reach into the community as, as Con Hogan had. I mean, yeah. Con, I had the wonderful privilege of working with him for 10 years and yeah. he just brought that same kind of focus on what we can do to make Vermont a better place. I absolutely agree. In fact, I came to Vermont <laughs> in 1989 and um, I got to work for the state of Vermont for three years when I first came you to Vermont. With the HR department? Is yes, yeah. I was. I was. And I got, and, and Con Hogan, um, you know, was one of the folks I got to work with. And I just, I was so thrilled to work with a public servant that had the caliber of, of not just leadership skills, but these deeply rooted values yeah. in doing the right thing, not just for Vermont, but for all the people that he worked with. Um, and that was so powerful. So this award we started in 2015 when Khan was still alive, but we knew that he was ailing to just mm -hmm. really highlight the kind of leadership that he exemplifies. I think last year was the first time that you made a nomination, and I'm yeah. curious, what went into your thinking to be ready to nominate somebody? Well, you know, honestly, I, again, I'm a huge fan of cons, and I, I, you know, really, as I think about it, I should have been nominating people every year because <laughs> I think it's really important. I, I think it's really important to recognize um, 
our peers, to recognize other Vermonters, you know, whether they're early in their career, peers that are early in their mm -hmm. career, or, you know, but anybody who's leading, you know, uh, needs to be recognized and celebrated. Um, and, and, and that becomes such a great platform for inspiring others. So I was just thrilled to be able to nominate Jim Baker. Well, I, and I have to say, I, I've been on the committee since, it, since we started. Mm -hmm. None of us had heard of Jim Baker. Mm -hmm. So this was a, it was a really important nomination. We weren't aware of what was going on in Rutland. We weren't aware of the relationship between the business community and the criminal justice community and the, any of those things. Mm -hmm. So we're very grateful to you. And okay. I'm wondering if that was a, if it was a deliberate choice to... Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that there are, you know, so many amazing leaders that need to be celebrated yeah. and don't necessarily have the visibility that comes when you're a Mary Powell leading the state's largest energy company, right? Yeah. Um, because whether you want visibility or not, that comes with, that <laughs> comes comes with, with a job. These, right? It comes with a job. Um, you know, and there are so many amazing things that are happening in our state. And yeah, he exemplified, I thought, everything that Con Hogan valued. I mean, everything, like the really, the focus on data, um, the focus on bringing love to your work. I mean, I feel like the biggest thing we bonded over together when I started uh, having the opportunity to work in Rutland with the Rutland community was really the love of the community mm. and, the, and the potential for being part of the transformation that, you know, many others in Rutland too, realized was there around really leaning into the beauty of the community, the love in the community, and bringing together all the different stakeholders that all have so much in common. Mm -hmm. um, so it really was it this was great a merging of like story. the, yeah, uh, the, the police department and the, you know, certainly the mayor's office and the business leaders and p folks on the, you know, social services side mm -hmm. of the equation and all working together you know, to me, it just exemplifies the power of a small state like Vermont. You know, that's hard to accomplish in real. I'm not saying it's impossible, but yeah. in big, big states with massive community, you know, our power is in our smallness. We need to, and, and Jim Baker knew that. <laughs> <laughs> our and, power and our strength. I also feel as yeah. if, you know, Vermont in so many areas has been able to be a leader in the nation with environmental protection or yeah. the work that you're doing our early childhood work because we're small yep. and because we I agree. recognize and respect each other. Yep. Yeah, and we have the ability to get people around the proverbial kitchen table. Yep. I mean, that's, you know, we really do. And, and we have the ability, I think, um, you know, on most days <laughs> to realize that we have more in common than, than we have uh, a disagreement over. So, mm -hmm. so that, it's, it's, and that's really where I think he is so powerful, Jim is so powerful, because it's not just about using love. Again, it's about using data and love and grit. You know, he also was tireless, and he was, he is the type of person that, you know, um, you know, it's boots on the ground. His, uh, he has a boots on, a, on the ground approach, which he and I both really share. Um, yeah. yeah. And in fact, Rutland, for you, for Green Mountain Power, is now your city of the future, is that? Yeah, absolutely. Could you talk a bit I mean, about a that? I mean, part of, so part of where we were using energy as a force for good um, in the work that Rutland was doing was really tapping into the transformation work and then launching our transformation work in Rutland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having, you know, making, uh, working with the community to have Rutland become the solar generation capital of New England. So that was a goal we set. Um, and we brought in all of the solar developers for a big meeting. We actually led them to places we thought would be really good for solar adoption. We led, you know, basically a, a campaign showing that it could produce really strong socioeconomic benefits. And then we worked with, you know, Jim Baker um, and, and his team to really talk about how can we bring transformation to some of the communities that he, he and all of us were feeling could use or would benefit from or would love transformation the most. So I just want to say you're, the um, mechanics of your nomination were also stunning because mm -hmm. we obviously chose Jim Baker because of who he is and what he exemplifies. But I'm wondering if you could talk a 
about or give some recommendations to anybody else who's thinking about nominations? We were taken that you gave very specific examples. You talked about his use of data. What? Yeah, exactly. What so I do want you have I, for I, my advice for others is you know put some elbow grease into it. You know um, it takes some grit to tell somebody's story, mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes we just you know oh I think Susie Q should be recognized right, um, and you're right. What we did and may and maybe a part of it was because we knew he wasn't necessarily a name everybody would know, right? right. And so um, I, I wanted to tell his story, you know, really we wanted to tell his story. So again, Steve Costello and Kristen and others participated in, in putting together that, that package right. that you got, but it was, yeah, it, was, it came from a place of love because we love and admire <laughs> him and, and we brought a lot of grit to uh, it. Well, it, we were so grateful both to you and to Jim and to everybody that put some effort into that. You know that this year, Khan is no longer with us. So this will be our first year of the Hogan Awards um, without him. Mm. And when we told him that James was the person that had been selected, he said, you guys have hit this just perfectly. Aww. This is exactly the kind wonderful? of person yeah. that I would hope mm -hmm. people would recognize as, mm -hmm. uh, as a leader. So I'm wondering if you have any closing thoughts for us about We'll still have many years of the award. Yeah. We're aiming for 10 years, so there's still another six years. Um, any closing thoughts about how to carry forward the kind of leadership that you and Khan and James really showcase for us all? Well, I think, you know, thank you for doing the award. I mean, again, it takes work, you know, to have a committee, to look at all of it. Like, and that's really important because, again, I really believe that um, I believe in the power of love. I believe love wins. I believe positive examples are really powerful. Yeah. And, you know, we have a wealth of bad examples, you know, and I, <laughs> and I think that a lot, you know, sometimes it's easy to go to the worry side of life, and it's really important and really powerful to celebrate uh, people that we think are successful. So I hope a lot of people submit nominations. I hope you are overwhelmed by, oh well, my I, gosh, how do we choose? Well, let's, <laughs> <laughs> last year was perfect. No, I think, you know, but, you know, but wouldn't it be wonderful? It if actually, actually would be right? wonderful. You know, and if because, we could find ways to really yeah. celebrate all of those people who get exactly, nominated, that is exactly. one of the struggles for us right, right, every year. Right, exactly. Say. And But what was so powerful being there last year, you know, when Jim got... Uh, honored was hearing the impact this award had on the previous recipients and right. the work they yeah. had done because that's also really powerful so that's something people need to know about is that this this has inspired a whole no the, another level of work for people in the context of the award and the opportunity the award mm -hmm. provides so thank you so much for doing oh, the well, award. Well Mary thank you so much for coming to talk about it Thank you all for listening. We really encourage you to submit an award and the information is on the contact page as well as more information around Green Mountain Power because I just learned so much. Mm -hmm. And we also want to thank the station, Channel 17, for providing this opportunity for people to get their message out to the public. Um, if you have a message that you'd like to get out and you're a nonprofit, give them a call. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Mary, very Thanks. much. Wonderful to be with you. Thanks.